given him one quarter of a cc of uh, low dose, low concentration rhombin or xylazine, okay? And I've given it to him in the muscle. And as we talk about low volume intramuscular injection, so I gave it to him in a one cc syringe so I could actually see that it was 0.25 very closely. And I gave it to him in the muscle. And in the muscle, Caps, one of the best places that will maintain quality but is a very effective place to give an IM injection in a calf is in the neck. And then when I come back, even with sedation, I still need to numb the horn so I can come back and then uh, do local anesthesia injection of lidocaine with him being absolutely cooperative. Okay, so this is really nice for a one person job. It's not necessary for you to have the calf sedated, but we do think it's necessary that you all begin to think about local anesthesia. If he wasn't sedate, there are many, many helpful, maybe if you could hold them, there are many helpful uh, tools to restrain the calf. I have one of them here today, but you have handy tools that can be clipped onto the back of the pen that can easily, when it's clipped on, you can put the calf, restrain it behind the, behind the head, and then you can do your nerve blocks without uh, the calf moving. So there are helpful devices that would eliminate the need for sedation. The sedative we use, as many of you recognize from having surgery on cows, is a prescription drug and it's extra label use. So it would require that you're working closely with your veterinarian and you understand how to use it. Understand that there's four days meat withholding because of my use of the xylazine or often. So he, he can't go anywhere to, he won't be marketable for four days after this. Well, today I'm going to focus on heat dehorners, electric, butane, propane dehorners. I'm going to use electric today just for the convenience of it. But um, I think for all methods of dehorning, and absolutely critical if you're using paste, is clip the hair so you can see where the horn bud is. It's really helpful now with his horn buds. I brought two different sizes of dehorners, and now I can use the smaller size because I can see the horn bud. If you're going to paste them at a day of age, you want to make sure you're pasting at the horn bud. It's also important with pasting, and People are very, very effective with paste, but generally we wouldn't use paste in any cats that are going to be in group housing or grouped together because it is caustic and you don't want it to get on the other, other calf. But it can be very effective and producers will find levels, you know, no more than 10% scurs even with a paste thing. So uh, it's very good, but we're going to use the heat. Ideal time to dehorn calves is as soon as possible, okay? And uh, I like that two to three week range because two weeks I can see the buds, if I'm, particularly if I'm going to use heat. Okay, I can see the buds really well. And at two weeks, generally they're past their risk for scours. So they're healthy, they're on feed, everything's going smoothly, and that's a great time to do it. As you get older than four weeks, it just becomes more difficult for the calf and more difficult for you. The local anesthetic I'm going to use is lidocaine. And so I'm going to draw the full dose that I need. I need two cc's at each of the sites that I'm going to block. And I'm just going to pull it into one syringe. And I have a 22 gauge, now a very small one inch needle, okay? Small gauge, one inch needle that I'm going to administer and show you where the, where the nerves run. In general, in a young calf, the biggest nerve that you want to do, and oftentimes the only block that veterinarians will train you to do. It's the corneal nerve, it's the one that goes to the horn. And the major branch of that is halfway between the side of the eye, this outside side of the eye, and the horn. Just make a line from the outside of the eye to the horn. You'll feel a nice bony ridge there. And halfway in between, you'll feel a little spot underneath there where the nerve runs. Now, I'm not injecting the nerve, but what I'm doing when I introduce the lidocaine is to just place the numbing agent around the nerve. So I just slip this needle underneath the skin, okay? And you could do it.
very, very, very comfortable. And once you're underneath the skin, the injection should go pretty well. And I'm going to just watch and make sure I put two cc's right there. Okay? And I can spread it out a little bit. And then that should numb that major branch. Okay? Particularly if you do older calves, but I'm not going to take any chances today on the pain. And I pretty much use a second block. And the second block is if you think the horn, think of the horn as a clock face. And 12 o'clock is facing the podium. And 6 o'clock is facing my left hand over here. In this outside, so in this case it would be a 6 to 8 o'clock position, that nerve is very, the corneal nerve, another branch, is very uh, close to the skin. So I'm, I'm going to take no chances that that one didn't get it all. And I'm going to just put lidocaine from that 6 to 8 o'clock position. And again, I'm going to get this needle under the skin. And then if I inject as I go along, it's numbing as I go along, and he doesn't feel it. And again, I'm going to use two cc's here. And it's making a bleb. You can probably see the bleb. And if I could read it, I think we're going to go right to four. Okay. And now he has another bleb where there's a superficial branch of that nerve. So I'm double covered here. So as you know, when you're at the dentist's office, you've got to give that about five minutes. If you're like me, I don't like to come back and do scurves. So one of the things is to be able to hold this, another thing that the local anesthesia gives us is the ability to hold this up over the horn for the proper amount of time. You don't want to do too much, but you don't want to do too little. So I usually push it down onto the horn and rock it back and forth. One, two, three, four, five. So it's not one, two, three, four, five, but it's 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, four, and five. So I feel the horn bud and I'm just going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So whether the pressure or I didn't do a good job on under a block, the calf, that wasn't ideal. And, you know, life isn't always ideal. But, all right, so I'm going to do this side. One, two, three. And I don't want to burn Mindy. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. We should see that red ring. I see one spot where the red ring isn't there. So I want to make sure that I don't get regrowth. So I'm just going to get the front part of that horn bud. Okay. Now I can see that white. It's, I even raised it with the white. Here, I didn't do a very good job because I didn't want to burn them in. Excuse, huh? <laughs> okay, one, two. And you, I appreciate that excuse. <laughs> <laughs> if we've done a good job on him, I'm just going to pop the horn buds off, okay? And we should be able to pop those horn buds, okay? So when the horn bud is separated, we should be able to separate that skin. And you can see the white and the pink around there, and the horn bud is off. Okay, you want to watch this one? We're just going to see how that's popped off now. Okay, you see that? So that's what you're looking for. The horn bud is off. Okay, so I'm going to hold it for Mindy. And I'm holding his chin down so it makes it easier for her to hold this vein off and make it stand up. To get, offer the calf a prolonged period of having less inflammation, less pain. And the evidence has shown from trials where they've looked at uh, mediators of pain and inflammation that the calves that are given a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug like banamine do better. And so after we completed the dehorning, we gave the calf uh, one cc or 50 milligrams of, of um, banamine in the vein as that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug to continue the pain and the anti-inflammatory -inflam response.